Hey, what up, y'all? It's Brother Knowledge, Minister Knowledge, Prophet Knowledge. Y'all know the name. Uh, I just like Brother Knowledge. That's the name right there. But uh, so today we're gonna do the Acts challenge, um, which is Acts chapter uh, seventeen. I mean uh, eighteen. I'm sorry, chapter eighteen. And um, I just want to talk with y'all today. Me and my uh, my mother, my spiritual mother, we actually did um, Shabbat service today, and it was it was amazing. But it's something that we have been preparing for all week, and this is not something that you could just prepare for for one day. You literally have to do this all week. And she showed me something. The Lord allowed her to show me something that uh, preparation is everything. We should prep for um, our week. We should prep for. Um, the Holy Spirit every day, all day, and we should get geared up for uh, Shabbat Shalom uh, service or um, evening worship because uh, it starts on Friday and it ends on Saturday or the Sabbath day. But uh, she she gave me something amazing, man. And so today, of course, we're gonna talk about Acts chapter eighteen, and then we'll go to the Father's Heart Ministry. The breakdown of it and then we'll go um, into Acts chapter 18 but um, I don't know if you guys are following my podcast if you're following me on Bego if you follow me on TikTok uh, Facebook even here on IG but um, I would encourage you to go and listen to that podcast by Brother Knowledge and you can find me on the podcast as Brother Knowledge and um, it, it was on time. It was the uh, keys to the kingdom. It was I am statements. Armor of God prayer. Conquer your thought life. Prayer of authority. Watch what you say. And then the, uh, the healing uh, scriptures. And it was powerful. You missed the treat. If you have not tuned into that, please feel uh like go go and check it out it's on apple podcast it's on anchor it's on spotify all you gotta do is look up uh brother knowledge and you will find me father today we uh, we make a commitment to you father god to speak the right things to uh, walk upright to talk right to treat your people right father god father we thank you for this platform that uh you have given me to give to your people, to pour back out, Father God, to pour out a praise, to pour out and worship you, Father God, not just in song and um, and just the words that come from my mouth, Father God, but in the actions and in the, um, the reading of your word. So, Father, I ask that uh, the Holy Spirit comes in and gives me the words to say, don't let the words that uh, come out of my mouth return to me or any viewer void, Father God. I pray that this word will begin to uh, pierce the souls and the hearts of those that are really listening and listening to get an understanding and not just listening to uh, to respond or uh, just listening to say they listen, Father God, but really truly listen. And when I say listen, Father, I mean listen not just with their heart, I mean with their, uh, with their ears and their eyes, Father God, but with their heart. Let this pierce their soul and resonate in them, Father God. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So, the Father's Heart Ministry. Let's go into that. Okay. So, this is what the Father's Heart Ministry says today. Oh, it's good. The Father says today, In the midst of vanity, I am your glory and your high tower. Men spend their whole life or their whole lives pursuing significance and renown. But beloved, I am your strength and I am your stay. The purpose and significance you seek are yours by divine right in relationship to me, says the Father. 
Man's accomplishments are soon forgotten and beauty fades with time, but you will never, uh-oh, it went somewhere. Give me one second. It says, but you will never consume away to the ravages of time in my embrace. Rest in that truth. Know that I am your righteousness and the lifter of your head. He lifts our head up. That is amazing that he says that. Let's read that again. Man's accomplishments are soon forgotten and beauty fades away or fades with time. But you will never consume away to the ravages of time in my embrace. Rest in that truth. Know that I am your righteousness and the lifter of your head. The blows intended for you in life rained down on me 2,000 years ago. And you are safe. You are secure. So anchor your sense of self-referral in who I am in your life and nothing else. Your appearance does not define you. What you do in life does not define you. So your appearance, what you look like, does not define you. And what you do in life does not define you either. Look into the mirror of my word today and be known as you are known. So it says, look into the mirror, look into the word, look into your Bible and find yourself in there. Find the mirror image of you. I have loved you and I spared you from the raging sea of humanity that vainly foams out her shame on the rocks of mortality, only to perish in the brackish tidal pools of their own end. That is not your portion. You are walking around in your eternity and your eternity is walking around in you. So not only are you walking around in your eternity, but your eternity is walking around in you. You are a partaker of the glory that fades not and is never diminished. You are mine. I am yours. We are one and all else is just details. Father's Heart Ministry. Man, that's a blessing to hear that, man. God is right with us. We are one. It says, we are one and all else are just details. Everything else is just a detail. Okay, so let's go to Acts chapter 18. Give me one second. I'm getting there, man. Forgive me. Okay. And this is Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 28. Okay. Put this right here. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a Jew named Aquila, or some people would say Aquila. Uh, Aquila, a native of Pontius, recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to leave Rome. And he went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, every Sabbath. It doesn't say once in a while, it says every Sabbath. And tried to persuade Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with the word, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Yeshua. And when they opposed and <clears throat> reveled or reviled him 
he shook out his garments and said to them, your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. I'm an innocent man. And the blood is on your hands. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he left there and went to the house of a man named. I'm going to try to say this. Titius or Titius. Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue or to the church. His house was right next door to the church. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together or believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians hearing Paul believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision. This is what he said to Paul one night in a vision. Do not be afraid, but go on speaking. Don't be afraid. Go on speaking and do not be silent. This is what God is saying. Keep speaking. Do not be silent and do not be afraid. For I am with you and no one will attack you to harm you. For I have many in this city who are my people. And he stayed a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. But when Gal uh, Gallio, prong, uh, proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before tribunal, saying, this man is persuading people to worship God contrary to the law. But when Paul was about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, if it were a matter of wrongdoing or vicious crime, O Jews, I would have reason to accept your complaint but since it's a matter of questions about words and names and your own law see to it yourselves i refuse to be a judge of these things says i'm not finna judge this man i'm not finna sentence this man i'm not doing your dirty work for you and he drove them from the tribunal and they all sees so Thines, the ruler of the synagogue or of the church, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallio paid no attention to any of this. Gallio turned his head like, I ain't watching that. I didn't sentence that man. I'm not finna do what they want me to do. Their blood or his blood is on their hands. After this, Paul stayed many days longer and then took leave of the brothers and set sail for Syria. So he left his brothers and went sail for Syria. Set sail for Syria. And with him, Priscilla and Aquila at Sinchere, uh, he had cut his hair, for he was under a vow. And they came to Ephesus, and he left them there. But he himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. He went into the church, and he reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to stay for a long, a longer period, he declined. But on taking leave of them, he said, I will return to you if God wills. And he set sail for Ephesus. When he had landed at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time there, he departed and went from one place to the next to the region of Galatia and Figuria. Or figri, fig, figia, figia, strengthening all the disciples. Apollo speaks boldly in Ephesus. Now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, competent in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. This was a smart man. This is a humble man, a righteous man is what they're describing. He would have been competent in the scriptures and being fervent in the spirit. He spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Yeshua. Though he knew only the baptism of John, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue or the church. But when Priscilla and Inquilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him 
the way of God more accurately. So they heard what he was saying. They knew he had potential. But Priscilla and Quilla took him to the side and said, let us tell you a little bit more about what you're talking about. They explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he wished to cross Achaia, Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. When he arrived, he greatly helped those who through grace had believed. For he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Christ was and is Yeshua. Man. So it seemed like every time we open up Acts, somebody else is getting saved. Somebody else's soul is being saved. Somebody else is uh, receiving the baptism of the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit. Each chapter that we have read from verses 1 all the way to 18, you know, there's always like somebody getting locked up in prison for preaching and teaching the gospel, getting beat. And there's always a vision. And it's always God giving them a vision, telling them to keep on preaching and teaching the word. I got you. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. Don't be afraid of anything. I got you. I got people in high places. I got people everywhere. I got you. But then you always see right after that, somebody else comes to Christ. Somebody else starts preaching and teaching the word or uh, following the apostles. Man, this is blessing me. I don't know if it's blessing you, but it's doing some amazing things. Oh, so today I just wanted to tell y'all as well, man. Um, you know, uh, during the Shabbat service that me and uh, Mama uh, Marva had did today, of course, we got dressed up uh, because we, we we gave our best to our Heavenly Father, the guest of honor. And we praised him. We worshiped him. We prayed together. We laughed together. We, we told stories. You know, it was just, it was amazing. And this is what we must begin to do, you know, to keep the Sabbath day holy. I'm going to let y'all know something. Man. I had been offered a job um, a week ago or earlier this week, as a matter of fact, earlier this week. And the job required that I work Friday and Saturday. And... I said, no, nah, I can't do it. I have to decline. And the reason I declined is because it would jeopardize my walk. It would jeopardize my walk with my heavenly father. It would jeopardize the Sabbath day. It would jeopardize me keeping the Sabbath day holy and resting. So I declined, you know, because I know what the enemy trying to do. I know the enemy trying to get me off the course of where God is taking me. And I want y'all to start opening your eyes, man, and, and realizing that Everything that comes your way is not really uh, meant for you. It's a test. Everything that comes our way is usually a test, a test of our faith, a test of, um, you know, what we're receiving and what we're hearing, especially when it comes to the word of God and uh, being a full time ministry. So please watch out for those things, man, because the enemy comes to steal, kill and destroy. And the enemy wanted to kill me, wanted to destroy me, and wanted to steal me away from the kingdom. But I ain't falling for his tricks. We got to be 10 steps ahead of him. We got to speak the word of God over our life, and we got to remember that God is the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen? All right, y'all. Well, I'm not going to be before y'all too long. I just want to give that, you know, nugget to y'all and let y'all know that this walk, again, it's not easy. I love y'all. Blessings to y'all. Knowledge.